Hey friends! Alright, so today I'm answering uh, sort of a question. It wasn't actually posed to me, but I got permission from Dave to uh, to make this. Um, but Dave asked, what are some programming concepts that confuse me? I'm looking for a subject to do another screencast. Got a bunch of responses. It was pretty cool. Uh, currying was suggested and um, Dave made the assertion that he's never seen currying implemented in a project and thought, oh, I'm glad somebody did currying here. I responded uh, somewhere in one of these other responses like, yeah, actually I'm the same way. The reason I jumped in was because uh, my retweet is how Sinbad saw it and just the way Twitter does it. If you retweet it, you'll get the notifications on people who responded because they saw your retweet, which is kind of weird, but I was on the thread. And um, yeah, so anyway... Um, then Brandon comes and says, hey, I actually used it for this. And um, I said, hey, actually, that's not that's not currying. Uh, maybe I'll show you what that is. So that's what this is today um, to kind of explain what, what currying really is. What he was doing is called higher order functions. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some currying stuff. Um, so thank you. I don't know how to say your name, um, person, but that was a nice thing to say. Thank you comments are, are always appreciated and, and the nice ones at least and most of them have been nice so cool so here we are sitting in this code sandbox that I will paste a link to in the chat this very moment oh that is the wrong link um, that's the link to the event um, you won't be able to see anything there <laughs> that's the page I'm looking at uh, okay cool so um, I'm gonna actually let's go to Zen mode here I'm going to say console log hi, and then it will log out hi on the right there, which is pretty sweet. So um, actually, this was kind of one of the questions that I would ask in job interviews is um, I want you to make me a function that does this, add two and three, and that should result in seven, um, and then add two and then three actually here we'll just we'll build this one first this is typically well I'll, I'll show you all the apis that i want so add two and then three and that should be seven also um and uh yeah we'll, we'll just start with that so um let's in the interview i normally say why don't you just build this one first you know if they need help and then um and then build this one second so we'll comment that one out all right so we're going to make a function um Going up against Apple product announcement. I didn't realize that Apple was announcing a product. Well, that's exciting. Thanks all of you for watching. Um, okay, so add, we're gonna take A and B, we'll return A plus B, sweet. And then uh, let's do a console.assert add that equals seven. And it failed because <laughs> two and three do not equal seven, my bad. <laughs> two and three equal five. Uh, okay, so if, if we get this wrong, then uh, assertion will fail, and we can actually add our own message, whatever. But um, I'm not going to do that. We'll just we'll stick with that. Okay, cool. So it works. Now let's uh, do another one uh, to handle this case, um, where add returns a function, and then it gets the rest of its arguments. So um, what we'll say is we'll return a function. Okay, so that's gonna no longer accept B, that now this will accept B, and we'll return A plus B, right? Okay, so that works for this case, but it breaks that case. So now we need to support both, right? So what we're gonna do is we'll say B, and we'll say if not B, then um, we'll do this returning stuff, um, and then we'll return A plus B. Okay, so that makes both of them work. So let's clean this up a little bit and um, make this even better. So what we could do is um, return add A and B here. And that works the same, and so we don't have to duplicate all of this logic. And so this can just basically be, if I don't have all the arguments that I need, then um, I'll return a function that um, accepts the rest of the arguments that I need and, um, and then adds those together, okay? So that's, that's basically the idea of currying um, in general is, uh, currying is a uh, pattern where you take a function that accepts a given number of arguments 
and it will continue to return new functions until it receives all of those arguments. That's like the fundamental core piece of, of currying and yeah, as like our example. Let me think, I didn't, this was like the only example I thought of, but it'd probably be good to, to uh, give you another example. So what if we wanted to construct a, uh, or actually first, let me show you what could be cool about um, this currying example is, um, or like why this might be useful. Um, I can make an add to uh, function that will, um, oh yeah, <laughs> I, it looks kind of funny. Um, I can make this add to function and now every anytime I wanted to add to with something, whoops, I'd say add to to four and we'll put that in a console log there. And uh, I'm gonna get six. Like So I have this function that I can add um, anything. And what's, what's kind of neat about that is now I can do some point free style where I can say, um, I have my numbers, numbers, is this array of one, two, three, four, five, six, and thank my lucky stars for prettier. And then um, we'll go numbers dot map and we'll say add two and we'll console log that. So all of those um, are two. Uh, or like two more than what they were before, which is pretty cool. Uh, and so I, I could also uh, put that directly in there too as well, which is kind of cool. So like it, it's it's pretty neat. Like and another, um, you might think, well, hold on a second, can't we just um, actually let's refactor this a little bit because JavaScript actually has some semblance of of what we're doing here uh, built in. So we could instead of returning this arrow function, we could say if there's not a b, then we'll return add.bind. We don't need a this, so I'll just say that's null, and then a, um, and that actually works just as well, um, because what bind is going to do is it's going to return us a function um, that uh, has this bound to whatever we've passed, but we're not using this here, so um, we just stick with that. Um, and then we provide any number of arguments, and so now, that like that's effectively basically the exact same thing as what we did. Uh, and we could actually simplify this to to a single liner, which is kind of cool too, I guess. Um, so yeah, you can do either one of those, which is pretty pretty neat. Uh, but yeah, the the concept of currying um, uh, is it is a function that will return a new function if it hasn't received all the arguments that it needs yet. That's the that is what currying is. Um, so the, why is this not currying? It's because um, the route handler function is a function that returns a function, um, but uh, unconditionally. So this could be turned into a currying function if it could potentially accept the rec and the res, and it'll return a new function if it doesn't get the rec, and then return a new function if it doesn't get the res. So that's, that's basically why that one's not currying. That's why this is a higher order function instead. Uh, okay, so let me show you why I, I don't really like currying um, typically I, and why I kind of side with Dave here where I've never seen it implemented in a project where I'm s glad somebody did it. Uh, so I, I don't want to throw shade at this Andrew Codes. I'm sure they're very smart, awesome in engineer, um, maybe too s more smart than, uh, than I am, and that's why this uh, pull request was closed. But a while back, uh, somebody um, was contributing syntax highlighting to these blocks of code. Um, I wonder if we ever ended up like actually implementing that. Yeah, it looks like we did some uh, some other way. Um, but uh, yeah, so Glamour is this old project that I nobody should be using uh, except if they were already using it. Um, that uh, yeah, you should be using Emotion instead. And the reason the website's not updated is because uh, the build stopped working and I couldn't update it to say, hey, this is deprecated. So that's unfortunate, but the readme is updated. So uh, anyway, and so I wanted to add some sy syntax highlighting to our code blocks. And um, so here we have our interactive markdown file that was kind of a, a fancy, kind of cool. This was before MDX where um, we'd have, let's see if we've got any examples of interactive markdown in here. Nope, none there. Let's do basics. No. Ah, here we go. 
So we could do something like this where we'd say font size is 30 and now it, it jumps up. And so it's like this interactive thing. It's using this thing called um, uh, React Code Live or React Live, I think. Uh, it's really awesome, awesome thing. Um, but I wanted to create this um, like this whole page using Markdown because that's just like so much easier, right? And so um, how do I differentiate between a block of code that should just be code and a block of code that should be interactive? And that was what the, uh, um, this like weird thing that I built um, before MDX was a thing. So um, we anyway, we wanted to add syntax highlighting um, and so that work needed to happen in, in interactive markdown and that's where Andrew Codes was making his changes and he created this highlighter thing um, where uh, and oh by the way I should mention this is actually not currying um, this is just um, deep like um, return a function return a function return a function return a function um, he could have implemented this using currying um, and that that would have worked um, and so like the fact that it doesn't actually implement currying is less of a uh, concern for me what mostly what I'm talking about here is um, like having functions that return functions that return functions uh, and, and like making that conditional as w on top of that um, makes the code a little harder to follow that's that's really what I'm, I'm talking about here so um, here we say highlighter this highlight with prism thing is just this function that that does the highlight with prism that gives us a prism highlighter and then we make an HTML JavaScript and bash one for those and then um, we take the code block hi um, handler, which is going to call this create code handler, um, and that's going to take our static code block. And like pretty soon, you're just like, okay, I have no idea what's going on here. And I would much rather uh, just duplicate these couple of lines for every one of these um, than have like 17 layers of things. Um, yeah, it just like why can't I just call a single function to get my HTML handler or hi, yeah, I don't know. It just, it was very hard for me to follow and that's why we ended up uh, closing the pull request rather than merging it. Um, so I find that functions are great and functional programming is a good thing too, um, but you have to like step back and, and try to follow the code as if you weren't the one who wrote it and see if it makes sense um, if like you can trace through the code without actually running it. Um, because often with, with heavy um, concepts like, uh, like currying, for example, it can be kind of hard to follow what's going on. Um, and then there are like a ton of libraries that implement currying for you, and so you can, um, you can use those uh, if you really want to get into it, or like it's actually not super difficult um, you know, once we add a C in here, then we're going to say if not C, then we'll return add dot bind null A and B. And then we can take all three of these. Um, and here we're going to say add two and three. And then here we could say add two and three and four and then four. And now that no longer equals five. So that is nine and nine. There we go. So like, you know, it's actually not that difficult to implement currying, um, but what does it do to your code? Um, and typically it makes it more confusing, at least to me. All right, uh, I hope that was interesting and helpful. Um, yeah, like I said, this is this was a pretty common interview question that I would ask people. Not because we do this a uh, like implement this a lot. Like I wouldn't typically want to um, do a like have currying in my my code base, but because um, if you can implement currying, then it means you have a pretty good understanding of closures um, and uh, yeah things like that. This actually um, nobody's mentioned this in the comments, but this actually has a bug in it. Um, where not b, if b was zero, then we're gonna run into a problem there. So what we should do is undefined there, Un undefined. Gotta have like a, yeah, make that um, work for falsy values and stuff too. So anyway, um, hopefully that is interesting and helpful. I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna jump out. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Yeah.
Goodbye.